Hey, it's Jesse Cervantes, and bam! Wow! It's Creative Congo with another cool tutorial. So basically, I was setting this up because uh, you know I had this interest or desire of doing one on using Illustrator files and EPS files, uh, vector files, and tips and tricks. So here's like a standard Illustrator file. This is the same file, but using the convert to shape layers function in CS6, and then this one was created completely in After Effects. And that may or may not happen very soon, but what will happen now is this over here. Somebody I saw today on LinkedIn was asking about this collapse transformation or the uh, continuous rasterization button. And some problems you can have if you have a vector file and you're trying to either expand it, uh, enlarge it, scale it up, and it starts pixelizing very bad, or you know losing the ability to have 3D and losing the ability to have motion blur. So this is going to be just a really quick tip and trick. The This file right here, by the way, I did not create. I got it from right here at vectorstock.com for the grossly inflated price of one dollar. And you know if you go in here and you type in social media, you can get a whole bunch of social media icons and stuff and you'll see we'll be using one of those in just a second it's a pretty cool resource so I made this comp over here and it's just a background with a little gradient and a light nothing else so I'm just gonna come over here and I'm gonna import a file and this is an EPS file which is a you know a vector file and I hit composition make sure you bring it as a comp and then I'm gonna drop it into here so here we have a file and you can see that it's you know it's not huge and it's got a whole bunch of social media icons. And I just want the Twitter because I need to animate that onto the screen. So I would put a mask around it. And then, you know, Y to move the anchor point. So you scale it up. And so the problem is initially is that, you know, you can't scale it up without it pixelizing. And so, you know, you think, well, that's what this button's for. Continuous rasterization or or Trans but you do that and nothing happens and in fact if I made this 3D and put on some motion blur and I turned on the cast shadows and I move the position out just a pinch you can see that it does have shadows and stuff but if I hit the collapse transformation button you lose the 3D it doesn't exist anymore and basically what it means is so in the one hand it's collapse transformation because it's whatever this comp is and I apologize it's my mouth piece it's like popping the whatever this comp when you collapse the transformation it it overrides the 3d and it overrides the motion blur so you can't use it unless you have it on in here so for example if I turn on the collapse transformations inside here then come out here then it's clear and it works so one solution if you don't need 3d is just to turn on collapse transformations inside the comp then do it again outside the comp and then it'll work but if you want to use 3d or anything like that then you're going to have to have another solution. So there's basically two quick answers to that. So I'm just going to show you both of them. And um, so the one solution is to go inside the comp, get the original layer, command C, and then paste it out here. So then you have the actual layer, not a comp, but the actual layer. You make sure you have the collapse transformation on. And then, you know, I'm going to do the same kind of thing. Just going to go ahead and get that Twitter for everybody and I'm not being real specific here and in this case you can turn on the 3D you can turn on the motion blur you can scale it up and then you know, hit the position and so you gotta hit AA to cast shadows and that will work now I actually don't like to do this my my preferred method just for neatness and I you know I can't remember exactly why I know I've had problems with this in the past if you have a relatively simple project this is the easy answer just take the original layer and in this case this is not collapse transformations because you're not collapsing anything it's the original layer and you're making it continuous rasterization what I prefer to do in pretty much every case I'm gonna turn this one off and turn this one back on go to, back to the original layer I'll go back inside the comp and then I'm gonna do essentially what we did before I'm gonna leave the collapse transformation on hit Y 
I'm gonna come up here to my Twitter icon, go to my mask, mask it out, and then scale it up inside the comp basically. So now it's nice and big in here. And then I can come back out here to forget about collapse transformation, just do regular 3D, regular motion blur. And uh, you know, it'll work. And and that's the other way it can work. Now the problem with this is, for example, if you start wanting to let me pull it back a little bit. If you wanted to scale it up further past 100, then you start getting the pixelization again because you know, you take this thing over 100 and it's bigger than it's, you, you don't want to take it over 100% because that's as big as the comp is. After that, it starts to pixelize. So the solution is to come back into this comp, hit Command K, and you see this comp is only 540 by, you know, 569. I have this lock aspect. If you don't have that on, you can do something like 4, I'm just going to do 40,000. I'm going to make it really big just to be very obvious. And then you see that what you have is a comp that's very wide and not very tall. I'm going to Command-Z that and Command-K. Lock the aspect ratio, and I'm just going to make it 2,500 because my original comp is 1920 by 1080, and this is bigger than that. So this will be a larger comp, and then I'll scale it up inside here. So now it's like, you know, 2,000% its original size, which, you know, it's fine because I come back out here, and rather than having it to worry about it too much, you see it's at 100%, I just scale it down. So now it's only at 19%, and I can make it as big as I want, stays solid, I can make it as small as I want, oops, stays solid. And uh, that's basically it. There you go. Uh, one last very quick tip, just in case, is, you know, so if I wanted to have more than one of these, I can duplicate this, and if I come into this comp, I hit M, get the mask, and let, I'm just going to move the mask up. I'm hitting the shift key and the arrow key to move it up 10 pixels at a time. And you know, so you move the arrow key and that moves it down one, but if you hold the shift, it moves it down 10. And then I just bring the next icon in. So like I wanted to have also the blogger icon as well as the Twitter icon. Come into here and now what I have is two bloggers. Because if you duplicate a layer down here, it's, it's another instance of the exact same uh, comp, excuse me. You are creating the exact same comp twice if you copy it down here. So the better thing to do, I'm going to pull this out just a little bit so it's in front of the other one. You can see there's a shadow. The better thing to do is, well, the only other solution is to come up here. And what I what I prefer to do is, like for example, I know this is my blogger comp. Hit the Enter key and I'll make it blogger, you know, icon. And so now they both say blogger icon. What I'll do is I'll duplicate it up here. And then I'll make the next one say Twitter icon. Double click on my Twitter icon and then, you know, sort of go back and do undo what we just did. So I'm moving the mask down, moving the layer up. And then come back to my comp. And so let's say I want to replace this one. Now, I, obviously, I could just bring this down here, but like this one's already 3D. So if I bring this in, it's just, you know, it's it's small. It's a regular layer, and I have to redo all that work. It, I already have this one set basically how I want it. So all you got to do is hold down, make sure that it's highlighted down here, grab it up here in the project, hold down the Alt or Option key, drag it, and drop it on top of the other one, and it'll keep. So if you have animation happening, and it'll keep all the settings and just replace it with whatever's in that comp. So there you go. I'm Jesse Cervantes with Creative Congo. Hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching. Bye.